So for this video, I'm going to be taking the highest performing of the highest performing, the most extreme of the extreme. Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. Uh, actually, this video is going to be all about onboard graphics because AMD has just released their new A8 3850 as well as their A6 30 something something. Uh, well, anyway, the A8 3850 is the one that I'm having a look at. It's their new APU, and AMD claims it has onboard discrete level DirectX 11 graphics. So we're going to take that and we're going to put it to the test against Intel's Core i3-2105. So this uses Intel HD 3000 graphics, which is the higher end of the graphics on the Sandy Bridge processors. So this has the same onboard graphics as the 2600K and the 2500K, but it is a dual core lower end chip that actually is priced similarly to the A8-3850. Now, for a third point of comparison, I'm also going to be taking a Radeon 6670 and I'm going to be plugging it in in dual graphics mode. This is the wrong motherboard, but it's around here somewhere. In dual graphics mode with the A8 3850 to see how much of a performance boost we can get by adding a discrete card in dual graphics mode, which used to be called Hybrid Crossfire. So I'm going to be running at 1280 by 720 with a variety of games. The first one is Dirt 3. If you come in and have a closer look, you'll probably see that it looks like crap because it's running at 720p with everything set to low. But the reality of it is I want to get reproducible results where I can actually show scaling between all of these different graphics solutions. So I have to I have to have something reasonably playable or especially on games where I actually have to play through. It's going to be very difficult to do consistent uh, benchmarking runs. So stay tuned for more and I will be showing you these three solutions up against each other. Woot woot. Battlefield Bad Company 2 is a game that looks like it was released like Check, check out, check that out. Check out that aliasing. Looks like it was released like eight years ago when you played on onboard graphics. See, here's my fellow characters. Such crappy textures, but that's what I have to do to benchmark on board. So here we go. For Crisis 2, ironically, the lowest graphics setting is high because they subscribe to the good, better, best, even better than that uh, system of doing things. Obviously, DirectX 11 is off with the Core i3. 2105 because it does not support DirectX 11. So here we go. Crisis 2 is the next in my list of, oh, I haven't even written it down yet. Crisis 2 games to benchmark. Okay, my benchmark run's finished in Crisis 2, but I just wanted to show you guys how utterly rubbish it looks with uh, onboard graphics. So here I'll zoom in as far as I can so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. There's basically no substantiality to any textures at all. You see that blurriness? That's not from my camera. That's just from like uh, being zoomed in, but like you just, you can't make out anything. It's kind of terrible. Like look at, look at these sandbags. It just looks like big white blobs. And performance isn't any good either. For The Witcher 2, I will be using the lowest presets, once again at 1280 by 720, which is technically HD, but by the time you set everything to low and are running on a 1080p screen, so you're dealing with interpolation, 720p doesn't look very HD at all. We'll see how it goes. Here's the results so far with the i3-2105. That's 20.0, not 200 under Crisis 2, by the way. Witcher 2 runs pretty terabad on the... Uh, 2105 as well. It actually doesn't look bad through the camera, but I assure you it's not good. Combat in particular is uh, pretty choppy. You can see the frame rate up there. Ah, it's been a while since I've run Mafia 2 as a benchmark, so here's the settings I'm using. All low, 720p. Good stuff. And then I'm just going to use the... Uh, oh, i got to restart the game. Here I am in the middle of benchmarking. My cat wants me to throw his toy for him, so I will. This is his toy. So now he'll go get it. Sometimes he brings it back. Sometimes he knocks it down the stairs and chases it on his own. Here's the big finale in the Mafia 2 benchmark. Where's the explosion? Oh, never mind, I missed it. Okay, well there you go. There's the results. 
It's been a while since I've benched Black Ops, but I figure it's appropriate. It's a fairly mainstream game. This is a very mainstream sort of platform, onboard graphics, all that stuff. Check out this guy's shirt. Yeah, yeah. We're not even getting, like, fantastic frame rates even so. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it compares to the APU. More to come. So here I'm configurating, configurating, configuring the integrated graphics uh, forcing multi-monitor. I'm setting everything at the highest. I've got 8 gigs of system memory, so I have no problem with 2 gigs on the uh, frame buffer. So let's see how this goes. So now that I'm in Windows with my 6670, I can see that Crossfire is enabled with the APU. If I go into the hardware, you can see I got my 6550D, my hyper memory. I got my, oh, where to go? 6550D, linked adapter, built by, oh, okay. That's funny, it said 6670 just a minute ago. Components. Display. 6600 series, there we go. Okay, good enough. So let's run some games. Now I wanna take a short break in my testing to show you guys something. This is the uh, Aspen canned benchmark for Dirt 3. I'm running it on the 66, nine, uh, 6670 with the APU running in Crossfire X mode. Now check out these frame rates. So I'll wait till the race is actually running. But when I ran it at 720p low settings, it destroyed the Core i3-2105. I mean, that makes sense. We've got a dedicated graphics card in there. and you, But you can see here, I am still, still demolishing the 2105, and I've actually turned the game all the way up to 1080p, all high details now. So you can see that it's much sharper looking. There's a very noticeable difference. I mean, it looks like a racing game from, you know, eight years ago when you turn the... Uh, the, when you turn the graphics way down, whereas now it looks like a modern racing game with uh, pretty decent graphics. So that's, uh, that's the difference it makes. So I just wanted to show you guys that actually the benefit is not necessarily in terms of frame rates from adding these technologies, but actually also in terms of dramatically improved graphical quality. You can see it's still going to outperform it. Look at that. Okay guys, so I'm doing my final run with Dirt 3 with the A8-3850, so I'm ready to present my results pretty much. So I'll talk about everything so far and then I'll show you guys the results of this one. So I've got my 6670 here, I've got my Core i3 over here, and let's have a look at the results. So this is my onboard graphics showdown at 1280 by 720 I'm using all modern games, so yes, you're going to see poor scores here, but the reality of it is these are designed to be run with modern gaming graphics cards, not with modern onboard. So, you know, they all did their best. However, I would like you to notice something right away. So first of all, here's the Core i3-2105. We have, for the most part, not very playable frame rates. We're at, that best, around that 30 FPS range, and then in Dirt 3 we managed to get well over it. Whereas with the A8-3850, you can see we're, for the most part, well into that playable range, the exception being Mafia 2. So that is the difference in performance between the Core i3-2105 and the A8-3850 in games. So this is at a very GPU-bound resolution, but we're looking at more than double the performance in Dirt 3, double the performance in Bad Company 2, almost double in Crisis 2, double in The Witcher 2, more than double in Mafia 2, and... Um, double again in Call of Duty Black Ops. So that is the performance delta between the i3-2105 and the 83850. Now this was a bit of um, uh, an error on my part, but at such low graphical settings, we're not seeing much of a benefit from this additional graphics card. So I, what I wanted to show you guys was, yes, it does consistently beat the non-graphics carded version, especially see where we're GPU bound. It absolutely blows it away. It adds about double again the performance of a Core i3-2105, where we're not GPU bound anymore and we're running into CPU bound scenarios. It doesn't make much of a difference. See this? So here in Crisis 2, it makes quite a big difference as well. So what I did was I actually ran um, Grid, uh, Grid 3, Dirt 3 at 1080p all high with zero anti-aliasing and I got about 60 FPS. So you can see that we only lose about half of the frame rate versus running it on all low 720p. However, when we take that same game and we run it with the A83850, which is what I just did, we get 29.7. So you can see that when we are GPU bound, the crossfire configuration can perform up to double 
of the 3850 on its own, which is in turn pretty consistently about double a Core i3-2105. So the reality of it is the CPU component is not as powerful as a 2105 in pure, um, especially dual threaded benchmarks. It's just not even going to come close. But the A8 GPU, just or the Radeon HD 6550D, just destroys the Intel HD graphics 3000. So thank you for checking out my video on AMD's latest A8 APU. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.